Assalamu alaikum friend welcome to lecture 3 of AFM and today we are going to talk about the financing decision the questions on this are, uh, we are going to do it at the end of the video so you have to watch this video till the end to do the questions we are going to first finish the theory part of it because this topic is more of discussion than uh, any calculation or anything okay it is going to talk about the financing sources that we have and how to choose the best one and also some theories so let's start here we are going to go through some specific financing options how do you raise finance the agency effect so financing could be two types you could either finance your company through equity or debt equity financing talks about when you are issuing shares to the investors that is equity finance equity holders they receive dividends for their shares okay which are paid at the discretion that means it is the director's decision whether they they are going to be they are going to pay the dividends to the shareholders or not when your company is not performing well you might not give the dividends when your company is doing good you might give them the dividends but the returns are quite quite volatile you see it is very uncertain whether you will receive, receive the dividend or not so because of this the risk is high for the shareholders they demand high returns rates of return because their risk is high compared to the other stakeholders they might receive dividend they might not receive dividend so from the business point of view if you see this source of financing equity it is the most expensive source of finance most risky also compared to the other types but it is flexible than debt given that dividends are discretionary because dividends if you want the company is not doing good you don't pay but debt is not like that debt on the other hand interest on the loan you have to pay whatever the position of the business is now there are some specific equity financing options which you should know you should know all the sources of finance by the way this might come as a discussion question in your AFM, not as a calculation so uh, for discussion you have to know it right issues to existing shareholders you can raise finance by giving right issues to existing shareholders this option is the simplest out of all and this is also good because your existing shareholders control is not diluted you're not losing control because existing shareholders are already receiving but this can only be done when the existing shareholders they can afford to invest the amount of fund required they should have that fund to invest otherwise this is not a good option second way you can raise finances public issue of shares where you issue your shares publicly okay this this makes uh, raising of fund easier because you can give to the large number of public you can issue shares but this is a time consuming okay public issue of shares means what you are becoming a listed company so becoming a listed company in the first place is an expensive and time consuming process and once you are listed you have to face a higher level of regulation you have to comply with a lot of rules and regulations all again it makes it very expensive and also because now the shares are by uh, traded on the public you might dilute you might lose your control because there will be more shareholders now your shares are widely distributed so that means there could be a chance of you being taken over also when you are listed then we have private placing what is private placing that means you are raising equity through private in a form of private not public it could be venture capital or private equity business see venture capital are those type of uh, people who invest in a growing up companies Pe companies which are not being so established they're in the developing stage venture capital they have a huge fund they go and invest in such companies and in return they get a share of the profit let's say 20 percent of this okay but these investors they do not operate through the formal equity marketing okay because they do not raise formally like how raising uh, like public shares or right issue what happens they are not exposed to the same level of regulation how a public listed company will be so because of this what happens 
private equity like through venture capital or private equity business makes it more risky it's a risky investment so because it's risky returns from here also also higher because you know the relationship between risk return higher the risk higher the return okay another type of financing is business angel business angels are a source of private equity finance for small companies they invest in small companies they have huge fund huge wealth they are known as business angel okay knowing this term is very important just know the terms you don't have to know detail knowing one or two lines from each is enough now we are moving on to the debt finance you can take on debt short term debt or long term debt short term debt like usually within 12 months you can take an overdraft or a short term loan overdraft if you are taking it is very flexible because you can arrange it quickly and you can repay it also quickly but disadvantage is if you are going over the overdraft bank can sometimes withdraw that overdraft facility at any time bank can do that so if it does company will be in financial trouble short term loan compared to bank overdraft is more formal arrangement that means exactly it specifies what amount should be paid and when and what interest rate should be so this makes your budgeting your planning easier right we have long term debt finance also long terms are expensive than short terms and more than 12 months okay long term debt can be used as an alternative for equity because you know equity are more expensive time consuming than taking on debt right if you are looking for a long term investment they say long term debt can be used as an alternative also debt in uh, debt finance are cheaper than equity finance because debt holders on the other hand your banks they will anyhow receive the principal amount and the interest shareholders might receive dividend might not receive dividend so shareholders pay uh, are facing more risk compared to the debt holders and also why debt is less uh, debt is cheaper than equity is because of interest we have to pay interest on loan and we know interest is tax deductible whereas dividend is not tax deductible what is the meaning of tax deductible please understand this it's good for debt it's an advantage for debt why see interest you often deduct before tax right you first deduct interest and then only you deduct tax that means from your income if you deduct interest that means your income goes lower that means for less income you are paying less tax but for dividend you pay dividend after you deduct tax that means dividend will not have any advantage it will not favor your tax it will not reduce your tax any long further because first you deduct tax only but interest will reduce your tax that that's why it is known as tax deductible anything that can be deducted and reduce your tax is known as tax deductible it's an expense that can be reduced that's why interest is known as tax deductible it's an advantage having higher debt means higher interest higher interest means lower tax but interest is an obligation you cannot avoid it you have to pay the interest that's why it is more less flexible than equity but there are some specific debt financing like lease you can take assets on lease rather than purchasing them outright but you have to pay amount okay you have to pay in installments for a fixed number of years but it is very like see lease leasing you can take it very like like a loan where you take a loan and you are paying the capital and interest in installments every year you pay interest and capital amount at the end final year you pay leasing is also like that you have to pay but the difference is okay in the lease ownership of the asset often stays with the lessor okay here loan you are taking loan is with you with the borrower but here the ownership of the asset often stays with the lessor they don't you don't own the asset they do not give you the ownership of the asset still it is with the lessor the one who is giving out the lease not the one who is lessor means the one who is giving out the lease lazy means the one who is taking that lease okay leasing is good because your maintenance cost are reduced it is with the lessor so maintenance cost are reduced okay Be but the disadvantage is 
because you are not owing the asset actually you cannot claim for tax depreciation allowance what is tax depreciation allowance because when you invest in some non-current asset or you have an asset you can reduce the cost of it by reducing it through allowance capital allowance will be given capital allowance you reduce it will reduce your tax also it is known as tax depreciation allowance but when you are not owning the asset how can you claim for capital allowance if you cannot capital for claim for capital allowance you cannot reduce your tax also so you cannot claim for tax depreciation allowance understanding so if your asset value increases you cannot benefit from it higher asset value means higher capital allowance higher capital allowance means tax reduces but here you cannot claim because you do not own the asset in leasing leasing larger companies will always have additional options over the smaller companies like bond issue bond issue is not for any company but larger companies have okay bond issue is usually when you want a huge amount it's not for some small small amount large amounts of debt finance through bond issue and even the rate of interest is attractive in bond issue but the problem is significant issue cost is there and also the risk that it might not be fully subscribed bond can be for domestic market as well as international market second type of debt finance is debenture issue debentures are asset backed securities that means the risk is lower because it is based backed by assets then we have convertible bond where you can convert your bond to equities at a later date mezzanine finance this is more risky okay the from the point of view who is lending it why because the holder of the mezzanine whoever is having that debt this is often ranked after all the other debt holders on liquidation when your company is facing liquidation mezzanine and debt holders will be paid the last after all the debt holders are paid that means this type of debt is unsecured also the coupon rate is high because risk is high syndicated loan okay syndicated loan means where you are borrowing the amount of the loan it's a large amount and you are borrowing it from group of borrowers rather than just one person rather than just one bank because bank might not want to take that risk of paying lending you a huge amount so you go to syndicate of bank group of banks and you take that amount but rate of interest in syndic loan is higher than bond market but transaction cost and the loans transaction costs are low and loans can be easily arranged when you are taking from the group rather than just single bank you also think see when you have to borrow 10000 borrowing 10000 from one person is easier or borrowing 1000 from 10 people are easier the second option is easier right same way for syndicated loan also you can arrange it more quickly now we are moving on to islamic finance okay this only will come as a discussion no calculation islamic finance we know it everything is same as the conventional finance business finance the only difference is this operates on certain rules it operates in accordance with the principles of sharia sharia means islamic law okay according to islamic finance these are some basic principles that are covered number 1 profit and losses are shared it does not fall in one hand if a profit is made shared between two parties losses are made shared between two parties interest no interest is allowed conventional finances they earn through interest bank earns through charging interest on the loan that they give but islamic finance has no interest interest in arabic means riba okay finance is restricted to islamically islamically accepted transaction see if any transaction is haram haram means prohibited in islam finance in that transaction is also prohibited for example you cannot make any investment in gambling or alcohol because gambling and alcohol itself is uh, considered prohibited in islam means haram speculation is also prohibited you cannot speculate in the future that means instruments such as options and futures are not allowed that means it's like a betting you're betting on the future the prices will go up or down it's that is the meaning of speculation it is not accepted in islam next 
basically islamic finance is based on moral and ethical investing when you invest it has to be ethically and morally correct that's what islamic finance talks about so they are saying instead of interest being charged don't charge interest if you want to earn make sure that returns are earned by channeling funds into an underlying investment activity that means you invest somewhere and you earn rather than charging interest and then earning you invest in certain activity or certain assets through which you can earn a profit use that profit to fund rather than having interest so investor are re rewarded by by a share in that profit they get a share in that profit after management fee is deducted by the bank these are some main islamic finance products you should know the english word as well as arabic word okay arabic word is on the left inside the bracket english meaning is given first one is known as murabaha murabaha means straight credit ijara that is the meaning of lease finance sukuk debt finance mudra uh, mudaraba equity finance mushraka venture capital and salam and istisna a forward contract sometimes they might just give you the arabic word mudraba ijara salam contract istisna so you should know the english meaning of it they might not give you the english meaning sukuk sukuk bond or sukuk anything okay now we are going to go in detail of which each of this means starting with murabaha that is straight credit okay what is the distinction between this and the normal loan bank will take the actual ownership of the asset okay actual ownership of the asset is with the bank what do they do they do the bank so sells this asset to the borrower for a profit okay bank is going to sell this asset to the borrower for a profit and that borrower they pay back the bank in installments rather than charging interest on that loan that's the difference they don't charge interest on it they rather sell that asset to the borrower at a profit and then borrower pays the bank in installments now the period of the repayments could be extended How? what should be the period of the repayment this could be extended okay but when they extend make okay no penalties are charged for it not even additional markup is charged for that extent extension by the bank and early payment discounts you cannot make they are not welcomed so that your borrower pays the bank early if you are giving them discount it's not allowed it's not welcomed ijara ijara means lease finance okay that means you are using certain asset for that using that asset you are giving the amount you are transferring the amount to the lessor under this concept okay what do bank do bank makes available to the customer the use of asset for a fixed price and a fixed period okay but in islamic finance there are some specifications what is it the use of the lease asset must be specified in the contract the contract should say what is the use of the lease asset also the lessor who is the lessor here the bank bank is the one who is giving the lease bank is responsible for the major maintenance of that asset and the lessee is held maintaining asset in a good shape who is held for maintaining the asset in a good shape the lessee you if you are borrowing from the bank now we are moving to sukuk sukuk is a bond okay what are the key features of debt in instruments that means the bond first understand they do not give voting rights in the company you cannot have a voting right but for equity holders you can have but they give right to profit before distribution of profit to shareholders before the shareholders get dividends you will get the right to profit next it includes securities or guarantees over assets that if you are not able to pay back you take over the asset interest is there with the debt this are the features of debt in instruments but when it comes to sukuk sukuk says under islamic law all of this are prohibited no interest 
okay you cannot say no voting right no all these are prohibited what does islamic bond says that means sukuk sukuk holder is the partial owner you see partial owner in the underlying asset whereas in the debt instrument we told they do not have voting right but here sukuk holder is a partial owner in the underlying asset and profit is linked to the performance of the underlying asset that means how the asset is doing profit is linked to that that means here debt holder are not allowed to participate in the company here sukuk holder are allowed to participate in the ownership of the company and they have the right to profit but if any loss happens equally both of them will bear the loss and sukuk is about the finance provider having ownership of real asset and earning a return source from this asset but if it was conventional bond what is the difference the interest the return that this uh, investors are earning is through interest only there are two types of sukuk one is asset based the other one is asset backed what is the difference asset based you are raising finance okay where the principal is covered by the capital value of the asset but the returns and the repayments to sukuk holders are not directly financed by this asset that means the returns that you are getting is not by selling this asset to the uh, sukuk holders but asset backed is just the opposite of it here returns and payments are financed by this asset only asset backed you are selling this asset to them whatever the at a profit whatever the return it is that is your return and through that return you are fi uh, financing the principal value but asset based is not like that so understand the difference between asset based and backed just the theory part you need calculation is not there then we are coming to the salam salam is like a forward contract you know what is forward where you are buying or selling a commodity or a service it could be anything it is sold today for future delivery you are deciding on the price the amount when it needs to be paid at a price set today no matter what happens in the future this is usually used used in interest rate and currency hedging you will learn forward contract in detail when we go to the risk management section but here just no brief definition is you are setting a price so that in future whatever happens to the price you are protected against it you have to pay the price that is set today in the future whether after 3 months or 1 month or 1 year or whatever it is known as forward contract here cash is immediately received from the bank and the quantity and the quality and the future date time of delivery this are immediately will be determined what should be the quantity of the product what should be the quality of the product what should be the future date what should be the time of the delivery everything is decided immediately once you receive the cash from the bank and the sale will be at a discount so that bank can make a profit bank will sell the contract to another buyer for immediate cash and profit in parallel a salam arrangement but remember salam contracts are prohibited for commodities like gold silver and other money type asset you cannot use salam contract there only for some commodity and services then we have istisna what is istisna istisna are long term and large construction company uh, contracts like this contracts are used for long term like large construction projects because construction projects are long term in nature
I was in the Stasnia contract. Okay. Here the bank funds the construction project for a client that is delivered on completion to the bank's client. Bank is the one who's going to fund this construction project and going to deliver to the client. What the client does is they pay a deposit, initial deposit, and after that they keep on giving an installments to the bank. Okay, but the amount and the frequency. How frequently they are going to pay, what should be the amount are determined at the start of the contract itself. Then we have Mudraba. This is like a partnership. Okay, it works in partnership where one partner gives money to another for investing in a commercial enterprise. One is investing, one is working on it, running it, operating it. Okay, this is also known as Rab Ul Mal. Okay. One is the investor, he's just going to invest. The other one is going to manage it and work on it. One is going to work, that is his responsibility, the other one is going to invest. The investor is known as Arab Ul Mal. Okay. The one who is going to work, the manager, is known as Modarip. Okay. So Modaraba. That is the meaning of profit sharing, you are sharing the profit. Even though one is investing entirely 100%, the other one is working entirely 100%, but the profit is shared among the two. Because it is believed that one party has the specialized knowledge to invest, the other one has the knowledge of managing it. Because no one person can have both the skills. So let the one who is skilled in doing what they can, okay, the one who is good in investing, let him invest, the one who is good in managing, let him invest. And share the profit 50 50 okay but if they want to share the profit in any other ratio other than 50 50 they can decide on that ratio so modaraba in a modaraba only the lender of the money has to take losses what happens if it's a loss profit is shared what loss loss the modaraba is the one who is going to bear the loss that means only the lender of the money has to take the loss if you see, this arrangement is very closely aligned with equity finance. Why? Because in Islam, okay, this is an additional this thing which I'm telling you. Since I myself was a uh, Muslim, so I know it. 
that uh, Islam they promote, they encourage equity finance more than debt finance. They say no to debt unless it's very, very, very urgent. And the emergency is, emergency is, uh, you know, it is really emergent. Otherwise, debt finance, they do not promote, they do not encourage because it is risky, right? You never know whether you are able to pay back the debt or not, which is again not encouraged, which disturbs the equity, the, the economy, right? So equity finance is always encouraged. That's why you see all the, uh, the financial instruments, they are linked to equity, the way equity finances. In equity finance, who bears the risk? The shareholders, right? Same way here. The lender is the one who is going to take the loss and not the one who has, who has borrowed the money. Then we are moving to Mushraka. Mushraka is relationship between two or more parties. Okay, who contributes capital and divide the net profit and loss pro rata. This is, if you see, it is closely aligned with venture capital. Where profit or loss, what happens? They decide the ratio in what they are going to divide. All the providers of capital are entitled to participate in management. That means they provide capital, but they are entitled to participate in the management also. But in the previous one, Modaraba, no. Investor only invest, management only manage. Here, the one who invested can participate also. Obviously, they are not required to do so, but if they want, they can. This is very much like venture capital. They invest and they ha can have a say, like 20% of profit they want or anything like that. Or they can even participate in the decision making. And the profit is shared among the partners in a pre-agreed ratio. But the loss is borne by each party strictly in proportion to their respective capital contribution. This is like venture capital. However much they have invested, in that proportion they are going to bear the loss. But profit, pre-agreed ratio they are going to share. Advantages. What are the advantages of using Islamic finance? One is because it is ethical. It's like a fair dealing for all. Whether it is regarding partnership, whether it is regarding the profit sharing. So it not only benefits the company, but benefits the whole community as a whole. Second is, it prohibits speculation and short-term optimism. That means it is encouraging you to take a longer term view of success rather than short term. Third, if you see the Islamic financial asset, do you know the market, how big the market is, Islamic finance? It have exited 1,600 billion US dollar worldwide. Yes, exactly. This is how big this market is. And as you can see in 2008, what happened, the financial crisis, please read a bit about it. But let me tell you some uh, snap shots from it. The 2008 financial crisis global financial crisis that happened why because of what because of loan because of debt huge loans to people who were not able to pay the bank was not paid they were giving huge loans mortgages now there are some disadvantages what are the disadvantages they prohibit riba and speculation so because of this what happens the IFIs the international financial institution they may be slower to react to market demand and changes because everywhere if you see Islamic finance, who follows Islamic finance only small proportion but the one who works on riba and speculation are high so because of that they are very slow to react to market changes and demand they will be very they will not be flexible also in their product offering. When it comes to Islamic finance, their products are not very flexible. When it comes to conventional financial institutions. So because of this, if there is any short term opportunities, Islamic finance cannot take advantage of it. Cost is also there. To develop new financial products is cost. Why? Because it not only has to comply with normal financial laws, but also the Sharia rules. Third disadvantage is this, moral hazard and principal agent issues will be more in this Islamic finance than the normal conventional finance. Because Islamic finance 
stipulates close relationships from partnership like arrangements if there is any partnership the relationships are very close when it comes to islamic finance and added to this this financial products they need to go through stages of compliance they need to comply with a lot of rules and regulations before they can be accepted so because of this there are layers of complications that means every stage they need to be approved and this takes a lot of time so because of this this becomes less competitive also it's not very competitive when you compare it with other conventional financial institutions you can say they are already restricted to certain niche of the market then interpretation of sharia rules might be different for different person some islamic finance but are accepted some are not accepted again this becomes a huge problem for users on what is accepted what is not accepted that means you not only really need uh, people who have knowledge in finance but also you need islamic scholars to understand this to interpret the sharia rules and islamic scholars not only they need to be expert in islam as well as they need to be expert in finance both sharia and finance rules they should know using islamic finance can increase the cost of capital why because to to demonstrate the repayment for mudraba mushraka or suku that is the bond they are like debt right to get the pay, repayment back becomes more difficult because you are not having any interest in them so because you are not having any interest on them okay you are not having their tax advantage right whereas other company organization if you see they are charging interest on that and interest is tax deductible so they are having a tax shield also which reduces their cost of capital compared to islamic finance now we are moving on to raising finance to raise finance you have to go through some two things one is theories we'll come to that later one is practical considerations what are practical considerations there are many one is ongoing serving cost what will be the ongoing serving cost what should, how high is the interest how much do you have to pay issue cost is there this comes in equity shares when you have to issue shares is highly the thing gearing what is your gearing if your gearing is very high you will not go for debt if it's low you will go for debt optimal capital structure how much should be your equity and debt what is the balance availability what is available large organizations have avail uh, availability to more options than small tax debt is tax deductible equity is not flexibility how flexible is it cash flow profile what is your cash flow if you are having a huge amount of cash you can go for equity if you are having less cash you might be taking borrowings risk profile if you are highly risky you will not you will avoid debt and covenant if you are about to breach your covenant that means some conditions stipulated by the bank when they are giving you the loan that is the meaning of covenant if you are breaching them if you are near to breaching them you will not use debt any longer so these are some practical considerations make sure you know these points explanations are there in your textbook i have already explained to you okay now let us go through the theoretical considerations knowing practical is good but what about theory there are some theories that you should know as well that why debt and equity how do you decide what is the logic behind it see first you should know that debt is usually cheaper than equity why low risk debt holders no matter what happens to the company even if the company is liquidated bankrupted they will be paid companies assets will be sold off the liquidator will come take over the company and still the debt holders will be paid off so risk is lower but equity holders on the other hand they might not receive dividends tax relief on interest debt holders they get a tax relief on interest interest you have to pay on debt so tax relief for that so if you see the vac value uh, the weighted average cost of capital which we are going to start that is our next lecture by the way after this will reduce if you have a debt in your vac see vac considers of both equity and debt if you have more of a debt your vac will reduce that is the whole idea of going for debt than equity but but 
increasing debt will increase your risk also after a certain point of time because you have to pay off interest and it's a fixed commitment before equity you have to pay this so it will increase your financial risk so increasing gearing if your gearing is increasing gearing means more debt than equity cost of equity will increase cost of equity increases back also will increase now there are four views to it three or four views to it first let us go through the traditional view what does traditional view says according to it firm should choose a balance that means equity and debt it should be an optimal level of gearing what is optimal level of gearing where your back is the lowest but the problem is they do not tell which point is the lowest so if you want to find your optimal level you have to do trial and error take this combination of equity and that combination of debt and check next theory is known as modigliani and the miller's theory with tax they say that having debt has tax advantage okay so that means you should be able to increase your gearing as much as possible that means if you take a higher debt you will get a higher tax advantage so that means as much as you want you can increase your gearing up to 99.99 percent but remember this theory is based on assumptions about perfect capital that means per capital markets are perfect that means you take more debt advantages there but it's unlikely to be true okay if you see in practice in reality do firms take keep on adding debt and debt because it is tax deductible interest is tax deductible no you will really find them operating in high level of gearing why because there are some problems also market is not perfect there are some risk if you are operating in high level what is it bankruptcy risk you might become bankrupt agency cost is there other stakeholders agency cost means other stakeholders will find it difficult we'll come to that later agency cost we are going to study separately tax exhaustion impact of borrowing and debt capacity the higher your gearing it will lower your debt capacity you cannot borrow on more then there is a difference in risk between shareholders and directors directors might not want to take might want to take higher risk shareholders might not want restrictions in the article of association your article of association says you cannot go up to a certain point of gearing beyond that you cannot go then increases in the cost of borrowing as gearing increases cost of borrowing will increase third is static trade of theory what is this theory says this theory says that firms in a stable position okay if you're in a stable position you will adjust your current level of gearing because you want to achieve a target level go through this diagram on the left hand side it is known as tax shield what is it that means if you're having a cheaper debt it will increase your firm's value on the right hand side you can see if you increase your debt your value will reduce why because of financial distress up to a certain point of time bankruptcy agency cost all this will increase this increase in cost is more than that benefit of tax so cost of debt will increase so through this you know your level should be in between either too high either too low according to you will adjust okay if you are above the target debt ratio the value of the firm is not optimal that means if your debt ratio is let's say 50% okay and you are more than 50% you are gearing that means you are not in your optimal reduce okay because above that level you will be having financial distress agency cost all this will be more than the benefit of debt so it, so that means what is your decision decrease your debt level this tells you a point decrease or increase it does not say by how much it just says below this level or above that level if you are below the target ratio let's say your ratio is 30% and you are operating at 20% it says increase you can still increase 10% more your debt ratio right so you will increase because still if you increase your benefit of debt will be more than the cost then we have pecking order theory this order says that we choose our financing in a order based on an order okay it has a hierarchy our financing decisions they follow hierarchy what is the hierarchy you first choose internally generated fund that means whatever is internally there your return earnings 
all those things you first use it exhaust once it is over you next choose the debt and after debt is also over the third option is equity you follow this order internally generated fund debt and then equity is the last option why because debt is cheaper debt is faster less riskier than equity that's why debt over equity so internal generated fund debt and equity sometimes you might not even have to touch equity or debt everything might be possible through internally generated funds sometimes you might have to take all the things even then also some will be left okay just knowing this theory is enough no calculation will be asked from this then we have the agency effect okay what is it what does it say see agency cost have a further impact on a firm's practical financing decisions if you are having an agency cost it will affect your financing decision why because when your gearing is high gearing is high the interest of the managers and shareholders are different compared to the creditors for example management they want to gamble on high risk project because they want higher returns but they may pay large dividends to secure company value for themselves so because of this they hide problems and cut back on disc discretionary spending because they want a higher value for themselves what do they do any problem is occur they will hide it any spending is necessary they will cut back on it so investor in higher risk business areas then the loan was designated to fund that means you are investing in higher risk business areas you were not taking a loan for that high business risk area but you are now using that fund sorry that loan for that higher risk business area understanding what's happening so to safeguard the situation what investors do they give some covenant some restrictions they put in the contract so that it restricts the management's freedom of action that means management's are not free to do whatever they want management's actions are now controlled by that covenant this restrictions include like what should be the level of the dividend that they can give what is the amount of additional debt that can be raised what is the acceptable working capital and other ratios on management from disposing of any major asset without the dividend that means when you want, management wants to dispose any major asset you will not be able to do it without getting the approval from the debenture holder because in the debenture holder agreement when you took the debenture okay in the covenant they must have written you will not be able to sell this asset or that asset or whatever because it is used as a it is used as a security to get the debenture this affects me what do they do because you can see it's having this issue they are limiting the freedom of action it encourages use of retained earnings they say retained earnings is safer to use because it is already inside your organization you have it you know it how much you have you don't have to pay anyone you don't have to worry about anything keeping any covenant or anything so it encourages the use of retained earnings that is the first according to pecking order then it restricts your further borrowing if you want to borrow also it will restrict that and the third is making new issue less attractive to investors because of this agency effect now before i summarize everything let us do a test understanding one and let us see what is the impact of debt versus equity on your financial statements test your understanding one so this question says that whether debt would be an appropriate source of finance for this company or not okay and you need to suggest some issues that they will be considered by the board but before that you need to lead a little bit about the company so this company is an unquoted manufacturing company it has been experiencing growth in demand and to cope with the demand they want to they want to expand the current company okay for that they need to invest in the machinery and it is expected to cost 30% of the current company's value they want to invest in machinery okay in the past a high proportion of earning has been distributed by a way of dividend so because of that now only few cash reserves are available 51% of the shares in x are still owned by the founding company 
now they have to make a decision whether they want to raise a loan finance okay they have already raised some loan finance they have to make a decision okay and this loan finance has been secured against the company's land and buildings so what are the issues if you see the answer okay the answers they have given it bullet points i'm not going to read the entire answer but i'm going to just go through the issue the first issue is retained earnings can you use retained earnings in this case my answer would be no because they have already exhausted the retained earnings they have very little left and if you see in the past they have always gone by the dividend so this is not the appropriate method for them okay so one thing is out the next issue is high level of required funding if you see the requirement of funding 30 percent of the company's value means what such a huge funding is required but if you see the size of the firm compared to the size the funding is required more when that is more you have to know that business risk will be higher even though it is the same industry he is growing business risk will be high okay so before increasing the debt they have to see this risk because debt itself will give another risk financial risk already business risk is increasing do you want to increase your financial risk also by having more debt it's an issue to raise third is assets for loan security if you want to take more assets remember already you have secured against land and buildings now you can only mortgage against machinery if you want to take a loan then we have gearing level look at the current gearing level current gearing level we don't know we don't know whether it has reached its optimum or not they didn't say already companies geared how do you know they have already taken debt secured against land and buildings but we don't know how much okay and if you want to raise further you always have to ask this question whether it will give you a tax advantage or not okay because if it gives it will reduce the overall cost of the capital but if the debt is too high even if cost of capital reduces but it will be at a high risk bankruptcy risk and all those risks but again after a certain point of time cost of capital will start rising because your cost of equity rises then the next issue is taxation issue as we know that it's a it's a machinery so machinery and all will give you capital allowances you can claim so because of that tax allowable depreciation right it will attract it will save tax so you have to see whether this high level of investment will attract tax allowable depreciation or not it depends on the current tax position sometimes they might not be in a tax position situation in that case even if you have more and more debt it will not give you a benefit then we have agency cost okay agency cost means your banks might give you some restrictive covenant okay especially when you have a significant level of finance to raise they will give you more covenant more strict covenant and in this case if you see it's a family control business so this type they will be very reluctant to this type of restrictions because they're family control business then the risk profile comes they have to consider the risk profile also before taking on any debt or anything what is the risk profile because their family members means they'll be undiversified so for them the risk of bankruptcy will be more but if it was an outside investor well diversified outside investor for them the risk will be low because they're well diversified then we have control are you going to lose control if you go by debt because this is a family oriented business they are still having that voting control what should be the choice will be between debt and right issue you cannot have an equity because you do not want to share uh, issue your shares and lose the control so either by debt because where you will not lose the control or right issue right issue also will not lose your uh, let you lose the control okay but if they do not have the fund to inject if the existing shareholders the family does not have the fund right issue is out of the option you are only left with the debt finance and finally consideration should be given to alternatives what are the alternatives other than debt and uh, equity you can talk about leasing for example you can lease the machinery or you can even seek venture capital funding but remember if you lease or venture capital it will lose to family control 
because venture capital will have a say over there they can come and control leasing lesser will come and have a say over there so you are losing the control so if you are willing to lose this control you can look for other options otherwise you have to see see here they didn't tell the question again i will tell you the requirement before i end this the question says suggest issues that should be considered whether debt would be an appropriate source of finance or not they didn't tell you recommend which is the best out of it because some students i know they recommend debt is better than equity go by debt choose equity equity is less safe choose it and earnings this is according to pecking order theory all those are not all. don't use pecking order theory and static theory and all those things the question didn't say like that you just have to use the case study and tell which one is the issues only you have to face what are the issues that they will consider like they will see whether the risk are they it will, will it increase their risk are they losing control what are the other considerations uh what is the you know this basically you have to list down the issues under that issue what is best that's it you have to say discuss this is a discussion thing you don't have to specifically give a conclusion this is the best this is the best choose equity choose dead over equity no the question did ask you that okay now we are we will be going through the effect of equity and debt on the statement of financial position now i'm going to show you how having a debt will give you a different picture right debt versus equity so you have been given the statement of financial position the extract of both equity and debt finance and you have been given the statement of profit or loss and you have been told to calculate roce and roe and compare the financial performance b what is the impact on the company's performance of financing by debt rather than equity so first let answer the a okay to calculate a we have to do a calculation that is return on capital employed so first is a you need return on capital employed okay both for equity finance ef and debt finance df for equity finance what would be the return on capital employed you need to use this balance sheet it will be your operating profit over your capital that is 20 okay so here return on capital employed will be 5 divided by 20 which will give you 25% for debt finance okay it will be same 20 because capital employed you are using the same income statement but sorry operating profit it will be operating profit 5 divided by divided by what your capital employed that is 10 plus 10 because here it is zero your debt you only have equity which is 20 here you have debt and equity 10 10 so 20 because total capital employed so here also it is 5 over 20 operating profit will be 5 5 for both here also if you see is 25 percent so what can you see return on capital employed is same for both irrespective of you have debt or equity okay now for return on equity you need to do working okay you start with profit before finance charges and tax fc is financial charges that means interest and tax or you can write simply profit before interest and tax okay i'm going to extend this line Profit before interest and tax will be what? What will be the profit before interest and tax? It's 5 only. Why? Because this before interest and tax, tax already they didn't deduct and interest. They told excluding finance charges. That means they didn't include the interest there when they deducted it. 
So it's just the 5 that you have to take for both. It will be 5. Okay. That means for both it will be 5 and 5. Now, your interest that you have to deduct. Here, there will be no interest because it's 100% equity. But here, you will be having interest because you have debt and equity. 10 debt, 10 equity. But what is that interest? Ten percent. Ten percent on ten. Ten percent on ten is one. One is your interest. So your interest is one. Now your profit before tax. Interest you have deducted. Profit before tax is here. It's five. Here it's four. Now you have to deduct your tax. Tax is thirty percent. Thirty percent of five is one point five. Deduct tax. You have to deduct anyway. Tax at 30% of 4 is 1.2. So when you deduct it, this will be 4.5, sorry, 3.5. And that will be 2.8. Now, this is profit before, profit after tax for both. Now you want to know return on equity return on equity is profit after tax divided by divided by what your equity only equity capital because this is return on equity not capital employee not your total capital profit after tax is what 3.5 your equity here it is 20 because entirely this was equity into 100 percent obviously which will give you 17.5%. But here it is 2.8 divided by 10 only. Why? Because the equity is 10, that is 10, not 20. So it will be 28% double. If you see return on equity is double under debt option than equity, even though return on capital employed was same. Why is it so? Because the debt of 10% is costing less than the return on capital of 25%. Understanding that debt, excess debt is more, it is having more benefit than the cost. Why is that there is a difference between ROC and ROE? Because taxation and gearing. Because you have interest, you had because of that your tax reduced. Tax reduced, it reduced your profit after tax. Because of that, return on equity performed better. Now you see the difference, the impact that debt has on your return on equity compared to equity. Now let us summarize everything that we have discussed. So, let us start with capital structure. We went through capital structure. Capital structure is basically debt and equity. The combination of debt and equity. Okay. Then we went through the key considerations. There are three key considerations. Okay. Number one, the theory. The key considerations are your practical considerations. Okay. And after that, we went through the theory. In the theory, we went through the traditional theory. Traditional theory says through trial and error, you will have an optimal capital structure. That means optimal gearing level. Second theory was MM with Modigalin and the Millers with tax. It says because of tax, you can have an advantage of debt no matter however much debt you take higher the debt higher the tax so that like that you can keep on gearing as much as possible then there was an issue with this model as well because you cannot just increase as much as you want why bankruptcy risk is there then we went through the practice the static trade off what is static trade off in a stable position if you target a ratio that this will be your debt gearing ratio if you are below the level you increase it to reach to that level if you are above the ratio you reduce it to come to that level then we have packing order theory packing order theory says first retain earnings then your debt then your equity that's how you go by the finance and then we went through the agency effect that they will give you the covenant the bank and all to limit the risk that they are going to face 
then we went through some practical considerations also the issue cost the gearing level the control the risk profile the cash position to decide on the appropriate finance okay we went through the type of finance short term finance long term finance debt finance equity finance islamic finance we went through so make sure that you go through all this just to discuss as from the point of discussion not any calculation so that's it for this lecture and see you in the next lecture till then don't forget to subscribe and do take care